here at Robert Street at the official opening of the Abstinence and Recovery Centre. It's uh, a new project bringing together a few other projects that have been working for a while but bringing them all together around a particular theme which is abstinence based recovery really. Uh, particularly for people coming out of uh, prison, we're in the shadow of literally the shadow of strange ways. Uh, we're surrounded by people who are at liberty today because they've found a recovery programme based on abstinence. Our involvement is in terms of training, supporting uh, volunteers from the recovery community to meet people coming out of, of prison and connect them to community resources, local recovery community, and particularly supporting them through that first sort of uh, 48 hours where it's critical when someone comes from prison sort of into the community. The day I got out, I got picked up by um, two lads in recovery, pay mentors, recovery coaches. They put me in touch with whole network and new people, recovery people, NA for instance, and doors have just opened for me, you know. I've met I've met so many inspirational people on my journey. I've only been out for 13 weeks. And I've just keep, I keep going from strength to strength on a daily basis. We always suspected there was something magical about working with somebody and looking somebody in the eye who's actually done it. I've been dreading the release from jail, I've been dreading it, because back in, all I know is madness, you know, addiction. Um, so that was a big fear for me, getting out. If I can pass on the message of recovery, or if I can inspire people as I myself was inspired, getting to my recovery, it's about living proof, you know, I will become living proof that it can be done. Because when I was in addiction, recovery was just a myth, you know. Um, and so I actually seen it with my own eyes and thought, wow, someone in a new person on a personal level would turn the life around. Wow, well, it can be done. And that, um, that ignited my uh, spark. That was the inspiration I needed. It kicked off the desire. One of the sort of critical moments here is back in May, we were doing some training here with people who really wanted to, to support people coming out from, from prison. And there were members of that cohort who had been on top of that roof in the riots in the 90s and now they're giving back to the community, they're supporting people who have made a choice to sort of change their life path but are often met by so many barriers that can take them back inside. I got convicted of um, taking without the owner's consent the car and they put me in strange ways for six months. That was due to go to Stoke Heath on the Monday, and on the Sunday. Um, went to church the next minute I heard um, like a noise coming down the stairs stirred loads of commotion on the landings seen a few people on the roof as well inmate opened the door with a balaclava on couldn't believe my eyes couldn't believe my eyes um, yeah it was frightening at the time it was frightening I was 19 I ended up staying on them the roof for seven days this is about a start and I think it's really supporting people who are choosing abstinence and choosing kind of a full recovery pathway. I've been in drug services now for the last 10 years. I've seen lads come out of prison who have worked within custody and to see them out here today actually in productive paid employment and to me you can't put a price on that. They're coming out of prison, they're coming through recovery and, and actually being productive members of society, being proud people and that makes me proud to see them happy with smiles on faces. My name's Holly Critchley and I work at Manchester Prison and I'm the head of drug strategy and healthcare. It's great to see guys in the prison coming through the centre, using the services, getting employment, help with housing, Narcotics Anonymous runs out of here and, and basically it's a, a holistic service that's helping support recovery through the gate and ultimately abstinence in the future going forward. You've got to tell the truth to the person looking back in the mirror. But that notion of intimacy, you know, this guy from who came out of here said the other week, intimacy into me, I see, through you. So you act as a mirror to me. I mean, I'm giving it back. I mean, like showing other people the way that like people showed me. All there is is me, you, and uh, me and you as another person in recovery. Where else am I going to go apart from forward? I've trained now to be a recovery coach myself. Um, so I can give back what was given to me. Because I know it's still fresh in my mind getting out the gate. Um, and I know the danger is going to Narcotics Anonymous as well, that's helped me, helped me a lot, that, you know, engaging with other people, like-minded people. Me, personally, was the NA way, the 12-step programme. I've uh, put the drugs down, the alcohol down, I've engaged with um, NA every day, I've done 90 meetings in 90 days. I'm engaged with Ramp, I've done my Ramp, and now I'm engaged with um, Gate Buddy. You're not on your own, that's the thing, you're doing it with other people, other people who've done it. You know, and they can show you might know that you need to do it, but you don't know how to do it until somebody shows you how to do it. Step one through to step 12, or any other form of programme that you're doing, but doing it with other people who've done it who are the real experts. I got introduced to a 12 step programme, talking myself, 
give you an understanding and like know uh, why I couldn't control my drug use. The pen just started to drop, it was all about action. Um, the more action I put in, the more benefit it, it gave myself. I was about 16 years <laughs> working in the prison and, uh, and also a member of Narcotics Anonymous. All of those years I was trying very hard to interest people that I met in prison in recovery. And I did use the, the wisdom of the program in my own conversations with people. And they, people seemed to respond positively to that sort of direct non-judgmental approach that, that we learn in the 12-step program. The thing that made a difference for me in my recovery was that visible contagious recovery stuff. Seeing people who I'd used with, who I'd been locked up with, who I'd got up to all kinds of shenanigans with on the other side of the fence, this side of the fence where I am now, doing the same things that I'm doing now, so living a productive, honest and responsible life being a good father to my children, being a good husband to my wife, being a good member of my local community. I worked for Dave, he's a top lad. Um, been through it all. I can talk to Dave on a level and I know I can get you know, positive, honest answers off him as well. He's a good lad and I respect him as well. Working in organisations like this, wanting to make a difference for the people like myself who were on the other side of the fence originally that's that's the difference it, it's seeing them people who've been where i've been who've walked in my shoes walking a different path they seem to thrive on on being told how they're seen in a way that is challenging but respectful and, and it doesn't um doesn't judge i've been absent now for um, 15 months and um, you know, it was about me, you know, being a, being a, um, being a role model, you know, for what I what I could have with the ripple effects onto other people. Lads who were in recovery, who have trodden in their shoes, they've walked the same path, and I think that in itself is the biggest advert any any addict can have. What I really enjoy is going in the prison and doing it. And the first time I went in strange ways on a wing that I used to run round on, try to score substances on a wing that I've withdrawn on. They'd been where I was. I mean, like. They're like five years clean now, so they give me that bit of hope. So actually being there as a professional and stand up on the fours, the top tier of the, the wing, and kind of look down at the prison and kind of... It was a surreal moment to look, thinking that I was, at one point, a convicted criminal on this wing, serving a prison sentence for the crimes that I committed in order to feed me addiction. And now I'm in here, try to give some people in here some insight, some inspiration, some motivation into breaking that addiction. Right, you know he was a friend of yours actually, like Ian Carson, mate. Um, because he was the person I first ever met, he was in Puffer, and he was the person who gave me inspiration. Right, my name's Ian Carslake, I'm the Senior Ramp Coordinator for ACORN Recovery Projects. I coordinate ramp here at the Ark, across the City of Manchester, as well as Buckley Hall, Forest Bank and Style Prisons. If I wouldn't have been, if I wouldn't have gone to that ramp course that day, um, I would never have met Ian. And it may have took me a bit longer to get into my recovery, if I would have got into recovery at all. And I, I've got this, my, my own experience, like, you know, to share with other people, people coming through the gate. Because I can ID with them straight away, you know what I mean? Like, the way I, it was when I came at that gate, like, I had all intentions of not using it. But as soon as I came through that gate, you know what I mean? Like, there was no one there to pick me up. But I'm in recovery myself, uh, all the staff who work for our team, all the volunteers were in recovery and I know, I know for a lot of us the one thing that made the difference in our journey was that uh, the influence of being around other people in recovery. And the rest of the up came from the room seeing other people do it. Ramp was a good thing that I did it because it opened, opened me as a person and the feelings as well. I forgot about all these feelings because I've been used to you know suppressing them down for years and then the mask you know, the mask's off then, isn't it? The first group that I delivered in Strange Ways Prison was a group called The Cycle of Addiction. And uh, it's one of my favourite groups to deliver. And once I did kind of delivered it to the group, the whole group stood up, clapped, and every one of them come over and shook me hand. And it was just, it was just really empowering. And it was, you know, I could see the impacts that I was having. And uh, you can't buy that. You can't put you can't put that in your wage packet. As much as finances are good at putting your wage packets together, you can't put that in your wage packet. 
I worked for about 16 years as part of the chaplaincy in Strange Ways. And at, at that same time, I was uh, starting my own re re career in recovery. And I came to know, over the 16 years I was in there, hundreds or thousands of, of men, many of whom, probably 80% of whom, had problems with alcohol or other substance abuse problems. Yeah, I've been using drugs and then I had drugs for the last 20 years. Um, it's all I can remember. And for the last 10 years I've been in jail. I've, I've been in and out of prison um, since the age of 15. That was been my, that's been my second home for the last five years. In and out like a yo-yo. In and out of jail. Uh, didn't know any other way, do you know what I mean, to feed me a bit. My addiction's around about 20, 28 to 30 years. Um, you know, I've been having a total chaotic lifestyle around crime and around addiction. I've been using drugs for about 20 years, on and off, and all types of drugs. 25 years of madness out there. I didn't care where, I've, you know, from my drugs from as long as I got them. I didn't care who were hurt on the way as well. I'm hoping it's going to be a gateway to recovery for all the lads that come out of prison and from the community we're involved in in substance misuse, I hope that this will set them on their road to recovery. I found that uh, the, the knowledge I got about addictions from my own recovery helped a lot in my conversations with uh, lads in prison. Where I am today now, I feel a lot better in myself. I've got my family back in my life, which is, you know, a blessing. I've got beautiful people around me as well. Who, can, who we can talk to. I think the difference is today we've got a, a linked up service, we've got people who are coming into the establishment, they're winning over that early engagement, working with lads while they're in custody, meeting them at the gate, we're bringing them over into the art. And I've proved it, I've, I've proved that I've proved it in the jail and I've proved that out here. So this is the first time since we've about 10, 11 years old I've been abstinent. And I feel brand new. <laughs> you know, thank you for giving me the chance, you know what I mean? It was the fact that Dave gave me the opportunity to come in and that was 2008, November the 1st, and uh, it was all the help and the support and the sense of direction when I wanted to leave and kick and scream and argue. And they kind of stuck with me and they bared with me and helped me through that process. And so come November the 1st this year, I'll be six years clean and sober, so it was the help of... Get in. Get in. I, um, I have coaches um, today. I have a a few coaches, you know, I'll meet him at the prison gate, I bring him into um, the ARC here, Robert Street, and um, we sit down, we have a chat, and we see what we can engage with them, you know, see where, where they want to move forward in life. So through going in ACORN and then obviously, you know, going back to school and getting an education, entry level maths, entry level English, to almost being degree level educated, got a good job, I delivered interventions in the community, I delivered it in the prison. I can't buy it, love it. Do my meetings, my NA meetings, and uh, I'm starting to do um, some more volunteer work tomorrow down at Bradner Point in Willenshaw. Um, but for me, this is the place to, to be here. Uh, that can survive this destruction that, you've, that you're putting yourself through, and that can emerge and, and, and bring life not only to you but to others. And that's, that's the other tremendous thing I see about people who are in recovery. You can watch people over the course of weeks change from a grey, sort of gaunt, skeletal look. They get colour in their cheeks, they begin to smile, and, and, and things take off. Things take off and you see, and then you see these people giving the message, carrying the message to other people and, and giving it away. And, and giving that same life and that fire of, of enthusiasm to other people. I've got a lot of hope and um, a lot of pleasure, you know, for, for my future to come with um, with the art, with emerging futures, pops. You know, um, I see a, I see a bright future, and that's because of um, you know with the help of all the services here. And I'd just like to say as well. I mean, I've got a lot of hope that it's, it's going to be, and I believe it's going to be amazing myself personally. And I've got a lot of enthusiastic enthusiasm in this place. Uh, there's a lot of services joined together for the same common goal and that's to help uh, recovery addicts, addictions uh, and offending. We've got lads coming through using the centre, um, getting the result that they want, getting into recovery and ultimately that's what it's about. It's about those guys um, and you know putting them on the road to a brighter future and I hope it continues. Yay! 
on a personal note, I'm just very, very proud of the way things have turned out. It's been, there's been a lot of trials and tribulations on the way, but to, for me to see the lads who are coming through and living good lives, lads who I've, I've known for a long, long time, they're here, they're coming here with smiles on their faces, attending the groups, and lads who I've not seen for many, many years, I've just seen them turn up today. Uh, and it fills me with pride, and it's, it's a very emotional time for me. I've been there, they're there, you know, there's nothing better than the book. We are the book. <laughs> I'm gonna glue, it just means moving forward, you know, having a line. I just feel a lot better in myself, a lot better, I feel, feel good, I feel good. It's about keeping busy as well. Working for me, well, my life's a lot happier now, you know what I mean? From existing, 28 years, uh, to now living. Um, absolutely brilliant, I'm loving it. You know, there's no looking back. They can do it, I can do it. And that's what I want. There's light at the end of the tunnel for me now. And to know life can just carry on. Being clean. We finally realised the importance of peers. Actually consulting the real experts. People like myself have been pretending to be experts in addiction and recovery for a long, long time. Uh, but recently, we, last few years, we've realised actually the real experts in recovery are the people who are doing it. The people who are doing it on a, day, on a daily basis, day in, day out, showing that recovery is possible, being visible at the recovery, and I'm reaching back, and crucially reaching back, in this case, back into the walls of Strangeways, or sorry, HMP Manchester, or any of the other prisons, and actually reaching in and saying there's a way out. There's a way out of addiction, there's a way towards recovery, it is based on abstinence ultimately, um, because we know that the best recovery programs in the world, the things that doctors, dentists, lawyers and pilots get as a, a regularly, are based on certain principles. Those principles will be applied here in Greater Manchester and the northwest of England for people who haven't had that chance before. So it's a fantastic privilege, it's state of the art. Um, and I think it's fitting that the peers are so crucial, it's all about jobs, homes and friends. And two friends I want to advise up now to actually, and they are friends now, I think, colleagues and friends, people who have actually done this thing and are doing it on a daily basis, the guys who are going to cut the ribbon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Come on.